that. The name says it all. I'm Hakeem Branch, and today we're going to be talking about UFC 268 going down this Saturday in Madison Square Garden in New York, New York. Now, also this weekend, we've got Canelo Alvarez versus Caleb Plant for the Undisputed Super Middleweight Championship. Uh, my bro Rob is going to break that fight down, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon once he gets that video up. So if you are interested in the fisticuffs, you'll catch that video too. Now, let's talk about uh, the card that we got going down in New York, in which we have a number one contender lightweight fight. And we got two title fights for the female uh, strawweight and the male welterweight. And we, all three of these fights are really good on paper. All three of these fights have excitement written all over them. And I can't wait to see them as a fan and as a budding uh, MMA coaching enthusiast. I am interested in seeing the tactics employed and, and some of the things that we're going to talk about today. So, like I said, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon, because then you want to stay tuned for the recap. But let's get into it. Justin Gagey, Michael Chandler, number one contender in the 155-pound lightweight division. Now, both of these guys have had a lot of success inside and outside the octagon. Uh, Justin Gagey being the former PFL champ, Michael Chandler being the former Bellator champ. Justin Gagey uh, challenging Khabib Nurmagomedov for the lightweight title. I believe he had the interim belt um, beating Tony Ferguson for that. So he has had his taste of uh, UFC success. Michael Chandler came out uh, like gangbusters, knocking out uh, Dan Hooker and then uh, challenging Charles Oliveira to for the lightweight belt, even though he was unsuccessful in a very entertaining fight. And these two guys are fireworks together. I've never seen a boring fight from either guy, and they are both very similar in how they fight. So we're expecting this one to also be a barn burner. Both guys are high-level wrestlers, even though they don't use it as much as you would expect from someone when we say that they're a high-level wrestler. Uh, Michael Chandler may use his a bit more. Uh, Gagey is basically using his so you don't take him down. But his objective is to knock you silly. Uh, Michael Chandler, same thing. He will use the wrestling, but he wants to knock you silly also. And when you got two guys that really want to knock you silly and have the uh, skill and the power to do so, we got to fight on our hands. So looking at that, um, we, we start to talk about kind of the smaller things that kind of break these guys down and see who is the, the more skilled or the more who has more opportunity to win. And when I think about that, I think about Justin Gagey, who is a bigger version of Michael Chandler. And then um, also, this guy has a hell of a chin. Yes, he was knocked out by Michael McDonald, I believe. Um, those of you that, you know, are avid fans like myself check me on that one if i'm i'm wrong because i'm freestyling here uh just based off the memory but he was knocked out by michael mcdonald but other than that he has been highly successful in uh in the ufc and of course pfl so will he be able to take those bombs from chandler can he use his improved boxing because the Justin Gagey we saw versus Tony Ferguson is not the same Justin Gagey that we were seeing when he first entered the UFC and when he was the PFL lightweight champ. Totally different guy, much evolved, has excellent boxing skills now, or I should say MMA stand-up. Uh, either way, he looks good. Michael Chandler, same thing. Um, he has shown that he can disguise his shots very well under fake shots. Um, he can use his shots to then do an actual shot. <laughs> and that probably is going to be his path to victory, having to mix it up and make sure that he is keeping Gagey guessing at all times. Because if he lets Gagey get that range and just tee off on him, it's not going to end well for him. 
Uh, Chandler has been stopped quite a few times, um, most recently by uh, one of the Pitbull brothers. Um, so it's, it's, I think it's more likely that Gagey stops him. And I think if it goes to decision, uh, Chandler will be able to like grind out and score those takedowns right when they're needed in order to get that victory. Um, trying to get through all three fights and keep this video relatively short. So let's move on to the next fight where we got uh, Zhang Wei Li trying to recapture the strawweight title against uh, Rose, Thug Rose Namajunas. And in the first fight, didn't last long at all. Um, Rose got her with the faint of all faints and kicked her right in the face and it was over in a little over a minute. That's got to leave a bad taste in your mouth. And uh, so we have an immediate rematch and we know the styles of these women. Rose likes to use her footwork. She likes to move in and out. She will pepper you with shots. And if she catches you with one that hurts you, she's going to finish you. But she can get you down on the ground and do some work also. Uh, Wei Li is more of a like powerhouse like you can look at her and see like this woman is powerful and she fights that way she she wants to land hard shots on you and, and put you out uh she has decent ground game as well but her bread and butter is, is hitting you in the face real hard so with that being said um like i was talking about the footwork of rose i think that is what's going to carry her to victory uh zhang is gonna really have to cut the octagon off or she's going to have to eat a lot of shots to get Rose in a position where she can really land some hard shots. And I just don't see her being able to do that enough to win a decision or stop Rose. Um, she's going to have to catch Rose like Rose caught her with something she didn't see. And with Rose being so elusive, I think she's going to be able to see a lot of what uh, Zane is doing as she tries to do it and stay out of danger enough to where she can get the victory. So let's talk about this main event. We've got the rematch between Kamaru Usman and Kobe Chaos Covington. Now, we know they fought a couple years ago. Usman wins by fifth round TKO. Uh, since then, he's beaten Jorge Masvidal twice and Gilbert Burns. Um, two of those by knockout, one by decision. Uh, Chaos has defeated Tyron Woodley by fifth round stoppage uh, when Woodley hurt his ribs. But Woodley was not in that fight up to that point. Um, we had seen him on a stretch where he, he was not in fights at all. And, and that was one of them also. Um, prior to that, Kamaru Usman and uh, Gilbert Burns, same thing. So we got a lot of questions in this one. And... A lot of like, how will Covington and Usman change their game plan in order to come out victorious in this fight? Now, in the first fight, you know, a lot of people are, you know, making this out to be a big thing because it is because these are both two high level wrestlers. Again, just like Gagey and Chandler. However, in the, their first fight, nobody went for any takedowns. The most we had was a couple of feints early from Kamaru as far as just feigning like he was going to change levels and go for a takedown, but just showing the threat that he could do it. Uh, now, Kobe, that is what he's known for. He's known for mixing up the takedowns and, and the striking. And in that fight, he showed none of that. He was able to throw a lot of shots. However, the impact of his shots and the impact of Kamaru's shots were in, in two different leagues. And now that Usman has really gotten time to gel with his coach, um, he moved out to Colorado, started training with Trevor Whitman, who also is training Rose Nama Yunus and Justin Gagey. So me personally, as a coach, I find that highly intriguing because I have not done that on a high level. Um, I have trained like, three to four plus fighters going into something like a golden gloves or like, you know, just a regular boxing event where you have to, you know, get a lot of people ready. But 
most times you got other people there that can help you out. They will probably have the same thing. However, I don't think Whitman can corner all three fighters. So, so who does he corner? Who does he help warm up? All of those things could factor into how they get ready. But I think that, you know, they are high level enough to where they have a decent game plan and all of those fighters are champions in their own right. So they will be okay. But I, I say that because Usman has been working with Whitman for the past, I want to say, four fights now. And we've seen him get better in that time period. Um, outside of him getting caught by Gilbert Burns, he really hasn't shown a lot of weaknesses. However, um, if we go back and you you know watch the original fight video that we did for the first Covington Usman fight, I would I actually went with Covington because of his ability to mix it up and that that pace that he is so uh, highly known for. Even though Usman can put together a really blistering pace himself, a really grueling pace himself. Um, that is Co Covington's bread and butter. And I thought that, you know, he'd be able to mix it up enough, even if he couldn't be effective with his takedowns, just score enough to where it would sway the judges. And, and when he didn't do that, you know, he just sat there and got ate up by Kamaru's uh, attack, which has gotten much better now. Um, he is an excellent straight puncher. Like his one-two is vicious. Um, as Jorge Masvidal, um, his jab as uh, Gilbert Burns is, is serious. Um, Kobe Covington even knows about that one-two. Um, he he ended up being stopped by it. So in order for Covington to win, he is going to have to. He's going to have to mix it up. And I think Usman in that same right should do so as well. Uh, Covington has a lot of confidence going into this. He He's built up a story in his head about how the first fight went. And it's up to Usman to break that confidence and say, no, the reason you lost was because I was better than you. I landed the better punches. I am the better fighter. Um, right now, you know, if Kobe wins this one, all of those excuses that he made to say, you know, why he lost that fight would be validated. And I think if he wins this fight, it's because on Saturday, November 6th, he was the better fighter. Doesn't have anything to do with what happened in that fight because looking at it objectively, Kamaru Usman proved that he was a better fighter on that night. Um, he landed the better shots. He was able to hurt him and he was able to finish him. Um, no matter what, you know, Kobe says that he feels that happened. But in this one, if he can attack the legs, um, Kamaru has openly talked about how he has bad knees. Why aren't you throwing leg kicks? Go for this man's legs. That that seems like something very obvious to me. If someone talks about how they have bad knees and it's hard for them to do certain things, you, you go for that. Kobe didn't do it. Maybe he does this time. Uh, Usman, who has very excellent takedown defense, if he can stuff some and then take Covington down and keep him down, I think that would go a long way to breaking his spirit because he's already a better striker. He lands the more meaningful punches. He lands the punches with more impact. And he lands them with more technical precision than Kobe Covington. So if he puts all of that together, I can see him breaking him and stopping him earlier than he did in the original fight. Um, if Covington wins, I think it will be, you know, because he puts that pace on Usman and, and we see a small dip in his conditioning to where Kobe can push just a little bit farther and, and maybe, you know, outwork him towards the end of the fight. And, and that's the real question. Like, wh what are we going to see when they step in that octagon? And, and none of us will really know until they actually do it, which makes this so exciting. So let me know what you all think. Hit me down in the comment section below. 
Um, also, when you watch uh, Rob's video of the Canelo and Plant fight, do the same thing. Let Rob and, and myself know how you think those fights are going to go and who you think is going to win and like what tactics are they going to use to come to those victories. Uh, we are not really big on like going on on feelings. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't like Kobe Covington, so I'm going to pick uh, him. Um, Kamaru Usman and vice versa. I don't like Kamaru Usman, so I'm going to pick Kobe T Covington. Um, we like to go with tactics. And, and at the end of the day, tactics are, are what wins. Um, emotions can sometimes go into it, but our emotions don't. Um, that's something that, you know, a lot of people talked about going into that first fight with uh, Covington's trash talk. Would it be getting under Usman's skin? And for some reason, they're bringing it up again. Uh, after he showed in the first one that, that it didn't. Um, so, you know, both guys know how to perform when the lights are on. So I, I don't think emotions are going to lead to a victory for either guy. That's all I got, everybody. Make sure you all follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Capital of Combat. Uh, shoot us a comment, like, subscribe. Hit the bell icon like we talked about earlier, and we'll see you in the next video. Till then, fight on. This is round one, and you've already lost. They don't seem to see that everything we've done is coming and gone. My fists are on fire. I perform till I perspire. My demons are in a rage. Keep thinking that it's a game. I kick crime, hurricane. I told them I don't play. I'm liquid. Black Street Fighter. Street Fighter. Street Fighter.